Welcome to e Shala, PG courses on computer science. The course is about web technology and today we are going to see about the module JavaScript and HTML DOM. The objective of this module is to understand the HTML DOM object hierarchy. We will learn how to access the HTML elements using DOM and we will also learn how to work with DOM objects with some examples. And we have already seen about this document object model or DOM with respect to XML. We know that this DOM is a W3C standard and it is a standard for accessing any documents. It can be HTML document or XML document. So, this W3C DOM is a platform or it is also called as a language neutral interface. It is useful to dynamically access and update the content structure or style of any document. This W3C DOM is separated into three different parts. One is the core DOM which is a standard model for all document types and we have already seen about XML DOM. It is a standard model for XML documents and there is another DOM called HTML DOM which is a standard model for all HTML documents. And now we will see that DOM has been created for JavaScript in, as a, in an earlier version which is called as the legacy DOM. It is actually well supported by all browsers but it allows access only to specific parts or portions of the document. Say we can access forms, form elements, images and so on. Whereas W3C DOM, it is a document object model which allows access and modification to all document elements and it becomes a standardized model by the W3C consortium. So, this model is supported by all modern web browsers. Now, this JavaScript comes in the context of DOM. This is a scripting or programming interface to access the DOM elements. DOM is, uh, provides a way to describe a document uh, in a form of a tree. So, any document can be accessed or modified or manipulated with a document object model or DOM. This DOM is an object oriented model that describes how all elements in an HTML page are arranged. So, we can view or uh, describe any HTML element in a document, web document in the form of a uh, tree hierarchy. And now this DOM is used to locate any object in our HTML page. But in order to locate any element in our HTML page, that element should have a unique address. So, this DOM would be helpful to identify the different elements in a HTML document. It arranges all the elements in the form of a tree structure. As we have seen with the XML DOM, this HTML DOM also says that any HTML document and all its all the elements that appears in the HTML document can be viewed in the form of a tree. Now, uh, we can we know that this DOM describes a window where our document has been opened as also an object. So, every page that resides inside a browser window and this uh, window is also considered as one of the DOM object which we call it now as a window object. And this HTML page or a web page that appears on a window is also now called as a document object with respect to DOM. And any of the elements that appears in the docu HTML document would also be now considered as objects with respect to DOM. So, this document object has various properties that refers to other objects which allows access and which allows also modifications to the document content. Now, we can see there is a hierarchy how this DOM identifies every objects of a document that is displayed on a web browser. Now, we know that this window is also an object that is the first uh, object that has to be created when a document has been displayed on a browser window. So, this window is an, one of the object with in a DOM hierarchy and then inside a window a document has been opened. This document is also now considered as an object and in a window you can open many documents. So, we can say uh, there can be many frames in a browser window. 
So, frame is also one of the important object in a window and location is another object that can uh, that is that would be considered in a window and we, we make a, a navigation among the pages, we go forward or backward with web pages. So, there is an object called history object that maintains the list of all the web pages we have been uh, visited and within a document as I told you there are other HTML elements. Anchor is an element that can appear in a document that is also an object one of an object considered within a document object and within a document you can have many images that is, uh, is another object called image and within a document there can be many forms it is called as a form object and you can have links created as HTML elements in a document that is called as a link object and when you consider a form in a form you have several other form elements. So, the form elements can be a button or it can be a text area or it can be a text field or it can be a submit button or it can be a check box or it can be a radio box, radio button or it can be a reset button. These are also considered now as objects. So, anything that is open in a window along with the window is now called as an object with respect to the DOM hierarchy. So, coming to HTML DOM, it is a standard object model and it also provides programming interface to access the HTML document. So, here the HTML elements are now called as objects and each of these elements HTML elements may have properties and we have methods to access the properties of all the HTML elements and we can have we can write events or we can have events for all the HTML elements. So, this HTML DOM will guide us to uh, get change uh, or add or delete any of the HTML elements in a document. And JavaScript comes in the context of HTML DOM. So, the programming interface to access the DOM element is provided by JavaScript. So, the actions or the events would be written as a JavaScript code which would be embedded in a HTML document. So, this HTML DOM can be accessed with JavaScript and with other programming languages also, but in this module we will see how we use JavaScript to access the HTML DOM elements. And in the DOM we know that all the HTML elements are defined as objects. The programming interface defines the properties and methods of each object. Methods we normally call as actions which you want to perform on any HTML element and the properties or the values of HTML elements which we can set or change. And once we know that how the elements or how a document are arranged in the form of a DOM hierarchy or a tree hierarchy, we now want to refer to any of the objects in the DOM hierarchy. So, the objects can be referred or referenced using their ID or name. So, if you want to use an ID or name, this the name or ID should be unique in the hierarchy or it can be referenced, the objects can be referenced using their numerical position in the hierarchy, say the array index. We know that you can, we can have more than one form in a HTML document and we can have more than one image in a HTML document. We can create n number of anchor tags within a HTML document. So, these are all actually called uh, or stored or defined as an array. So, we can use the array index to refer to the different form elements we have in a single HTML document. So, we will know that supposing we have two or three forms, then we will either refer to a form object by the name of the form or the ID of the form or we can directly use the form array. Forms is an array object. So, we can say that forms of 0, the array index is 0, which refers to the first form in the document forms of 1 would refer to the second form in the document and forms of 2 would refer to the third form in the document. So, using their numerical position in the document we can refer to that object and the third one we can refer to an object using their relative position. So, any element can be uh, associated with other elements as a parent or a child or a sibling because here all the objects are arranged in the form of a tree. So, for any element you will have a parent, children 
or it, it they can be a, there can be a sibling. So, we can refer to any parent node with, with a property called parent node or we can refer to a previous sibling of any object or we can refer to the next sibling of an object or we can refer to the first child of an object or it can be a last child of an object or it can be the uh, child nodes array of an object. So, this type of DOM nodes uh, we have different classifications as element nodes. So, all the HTML tags are called as element nodes. They can have children uh, like, like other elements or they can have attributes and the text that are that appears in the HTML document are also now called as nodes or text nodes. So, any text in a block of an element is called as a text node and uh, any element can have attributes those nodes are called as attribute nodes. So, this attribute will come the attribute in any element would appear as an attribute name of the attribute with its value. So, this attribute name uh, they can be a children of any element node, but they cannot have children or attributes and they are not actually shown when drawing the they are not shown when drawing the DOM tree. Now, how do we traverse the DOM tree? So, once uh, you identify or locate any HTML object, then we can take the first child by using uh, the property called first child or you can go to the uh, last child of the uh, nodes uh, children list uh, and then you can take the array of all the nodes children as child nodes and you can refer to the neighboring nodes with the same parent as next sibling or previous sibling and any element that contain its uh, contain a parent can be taken as a parent node. So, in this way you can traverse the DOM tree. So, once the elements are arranged in a tree hierarchy you can traverse the entire DOM tree from an object by referring to its first child or last child or a list of all the child nodes or it can be an ex sibling or a previous sibling or you can even take the parent of a node. Now, how do we access the HTML elements? All HTML elements are accessed through the document object. So, as I have already told window is an object in the DOM hierarchy, document is also an object in the DOM hierarchy the next object in the after the window is the document object. So, using this document object you can access any of the HTML elements that appear within the HTML document. So, this document itself is automatically created when you load the document on a in a web browser. So, there are several ways to access a specific element in the document. So, either you can use paths in the DOM tree to access an element or you can retrieve any element by, by, using their, by using their tag name or you can retrieve any element by using their ID. Normally, you will come across these methods which we have already seen when we were studying about the XML DOM. So, we have uh, methods like get elements by tag name and get elements by name uh, to access any of the design and notes for, from, a document, from a DOM object. Now, we will see how do we access elements by paths. Now, here you can see that uh, there is an image tag and we have a form there is a there is an image element there is a form element or a form object you call it now as a form object. There are three text fields or uh, three uh, two text fields and a, re a reset field is there. Now, we can refer to the object by using the path. So, you can say that I want to retrieve the image element. So, this image appears within the document. So, we start with the document dot as I told you this images is an array of images that can appear in the document. Here in this document there is only one image we refer to the image by images of 0. So, what do we try to do? Here we can see that this is retrieved in a variable called image img. So, this image dot the source attribute of the image tag which is now set to another image as light on dot gif. Now, how do we access any of the element here? So, here you can see that you can give a path like this document dot forms of 0 forms is an array. You can have more than one form within a document. So, forms of 0 refer to the first form that appears in the document and within this form you can have form elements. So, elements is another array object. 
So, this elements of 0 refer to the first element you have created in the form. Now, you can see that this is the first element that has been created which has a name as x. So, now we got the uh, element, we access the element in the variable like i n x. Now, we tries to change the value of this element to be double x. So, this gets changed, the name of this element gets changed. Now, the third uh, example shows that we tries to access either by the array index or by the name of the form. Now, you can see here document dot the forms array instead of giving the array index, we give the name of the form the name of uh, the id of the form, the id of the form is given as form 1. So, the id of the form is given then the element array takes now the name of the element. So, this is another way you can access an element by giving paths in the document. Then how do we access elements by tags? So, we know that every element that appears has a tag name. So, here you can see that there is a method called get elements by tag name we tries to access this method from the document object. So, document dot get elements by tag name, the name of the tag is given as span tag. So, here you can see that it is actually uh, it, there appears uh, three uh, two uh, span elements here, example is within the span and this one is an, uh, within another span element. So, this variable spans retrieves the list of all uh, span tags. Now, you can refer it is a now an array. So, spans of 0 it refers to the first one and spans of 1 refers to the second one. You try to change you try to change the style uh, by setting the color attribute as red and the next spans uh, tag uh, element is uh, set with the color with blue and you also tries to change the style of the span the second span uh, span element with the font variant of small caps. So, this is how you can access elements by tags and the third one is we can access elements by id. So, when you want to access it use the method called get element by id give the name of the uh, id of the element. So, when you create the element you need to use the attribute id to provide an id for the element. So, div 1 is the id for the div element we tries to access the div element by its id and we change the visibility the style visibility to be from hidden to visible. And now, this is a small example how do we work with HTML DOM. So, we want to change the content of the p tag given the id of the p tag as demo. So, here you can say we write all these codes has to be written as a script code. So, we use a JavaScript which provides a programming interface to access the HTML DOM. So, we use a script code we say document dot get element by id the id of the element is given as demo for the paragraph tag the p tag. So, we access that element change its inner html, inner html means that we change the content of the element to be hello world. So, this this would be actually displayed within this p tag. Now, coming to after once we have seen the document object we will start with the dom hierarchy what are the properties we have for each of the defined dom objects, what are the actions we can have what are the methods we have for those objects and the attributes we have for the objects. So, the, we have the top the higher highest level object is the window object. So, this object would be created once you open your browser and this is the default object which creates automatically when a page is loaded and since it is a default object we normally omit this window object. So, we, we use a statement like document dot write to display any mess, uh, any uh, string using JavaScript. So, actually we should have written as window dot document dot write, but since window is a default object we normally omit this window object and we write it as document dot write. So, we will see this window object includes several properties and methods by which you can manipulate the web page. So, the properties define some of the properties has been listed here. The property for a window object one of the properties a length which says that how may uh, the number of frames you have in the window and the name is a string value that uh, that shows the that uh, displays or that contains the name of a window and the parent is a string value that contains the name of the parent window and status is a string value that represents what you have in the status bar the text value what you have in the status bar. So, these are the properties which is described for a window object 
and the methods for the window object is given as the alert. The alert we, we have seen the pop-up box or the dialog box and alert box which is actually a method, one of the method of a window object. Instead of using window.alert, we directly use an alert uh, dialog box, alert method. It is a method defined for the window object. And then we can open a window or a close a window using this open method or the unclose a window using the close method. And we can set a timeout for the window which will uh, say, which will execute an expression after the elapse, elapse of the interval time. Now, the attributes for the window object has been given, some of the attributes given here are uh, the toolbar. This would create the standard toolbar for the window and location, you can create a location entry field. We can create standard directory or buttons. We can create a status bar, we can create a menu bar at the top of the window and using this attribute we can create uh, scroll bars when the window exits the window size. And the some of the attributes, uh, the other attributes are resizable. This enables the user to resize the window. We can specify the width for a window or the height for a window. So, when you open a new window, we can specify the width and height. We can resize the window using the attribute called resizable. So, these are the attributes with which you can manipulate the window object. Now, this is a small example with the methods what we have seen now. Here you can see there is a function as a JavaScript function called open window and we try to open a new window of width 100 and height 100. And using the function, using the method call focus, we bring the focus to that window. Focus is we put our uh, mouse or uh, the key would appear in the, uh, the key to type the text would appear within the window. And for my function is another function. Uh, which is for resizing the created window. So, you say that the window once you have opened is W, this uh, using the function called resize by, you give a new width and height by which you want to resize the window and you tries to bring your focus, bring the, uh, the key or uh, your mouse over the uh, mouse over that window. So, now uh, you have used an event called on click and uh, there is a button. Uh, yeah, the button name is create window. So, you can see here it is a button name called create window. There is another button called resize window and once you click this create window, it uh, invokes the method called open window which would open a new window and when you click this button resize window, it calls the other function, the my function which you have defined that is for resizing the window. So, you are actually accessing the window object and change the attributes of the window object. Now, we know that this is document is the important object in any window or frame and this represents the web document or a page in the browser window and some of the properties that has been listed for the document object or the background color BG color is the property that says uh, the, that represents the background color of a document and uh, a link color is a string value that represents the color of active links location that represents the current URL and title that represents the text specified by the uh, title tag in the document. Now, some of the methods for the document object are uh, to clear the document window using the clear method, uh, write the text of content to a document using the write method, write the text followed by a carriage return using the write ln method. This is we are using a document dot write or document dot write ln and open would open a document to receive data from a write stream and close would close a write stream. Now, this is a small example to uh, say or explain how we work with the document object. So, here you can see that there is a function called my function, we tries to retrieve the length, the length is one of the property. So, we say that document dot scripts dot length, this actually will find out how many scripts are there in the uh, document. So, here in this example the code we can see that there is one script here and there is another uh, another script here within this function enclosing this function. So, there are actually two scripts. So, the length property would say that how many scripts you have in this document. So, we use the get element by id and call uh, and take the paragraph tag, we change the content of this paragraph tag using the inner html uh, property and we tries to display the number of script elements we have in this document. Now, the output is like this, when you click it that function would be called 
and it says that found two script elements in the document. And this is another example, uh, you are trying to access the URL property of the document. So, we say that we, when you when you click the button, here we have a button, when you click the button, it calls a function my function which tries to display the URL of the document. So, you access document.url, store it in a variable and you tries to display it in with the p tag in the HTML file. So, you, when you click it, it says that the URL of the document and how to work with the history object. Each time you visit a web page and you click a back or forward button on your browser, uh, you are accessing the history list. So, you can add similarly, you can also add buttons or links that allow uh, that will allow you to move forward or backward or you can also go many pages uh, uh, either giving a negative value you can go back to number of pages or go, go front uh, to the number of pages. So, you can access, you can have a navigation to the uh, pages using this back or forward uh, what you are seeing in a browser. Now, this history object has a property called length which says the number of links in the history object and the current gives the URL of the current page, next gives the URL of the next entry in the uh, next entry in the history list and previous gives the URL of the previous entry in the history list. And these are the methods. So, this is what when you see a browser window, you go back or forward, uh, but now you can have your own, you can write uh, code uh, by which you can move uh, backward or forward in the history list. So, use a method called back or forward to uh, navigate to the previous page or uh, go to the uh, forward. And you can also use a method called go uh, by which you can go, uh, go forward or backward to the number of pages in the history list. So, this is an example which explains this. Here you tries to access the history dot length. So, history dot length will give the number of uh, uh, number of uh, URLs in the history list. So, you can see that the output of this code is so far we have accessed only one link. So, the output is displayed as one. Now, this is another example where you tries to access the method called go. So, window dot history dot go minus 2 will actually go back 2 pages. So, you can see here uh, once you click it is a button go to back 2 pages back, once you click it, it goes back 2 pages which is the Google page we get in the, in the output. And now, we can also work with anchor objects. Uh, anchor, anchor objects uh, here there is an example to display the port number of the link. So, here we have an anchor tag where you have an URL and we want to take the port number of the URL, you are accessing as document dot get element by id, the name of the anchor is my anchor, the id of the anchor is my anchor dot port. So, this is a property of the anchor object by which you access the port of the URL, port number in the URL. So, it, you can see that 4097 is the port number given in the URL. And how do we work with forms? Form is another object or property of the document object and every form elements are also defined as objects. And the browser creates a unique form object for each form that appears in the document. So, you can access using document dot form 1 if the name of the form is form 1 or the ID of the form is form 1. And these are the elements uh, any HTML DOM would identify in a document. So, the elements in an HTML form would be any of like this text field text uh, area or and so many, so many of the input elements. So, how do we work with forms? This is an example to show that how do we access the images. So, document dot images dot length uh, here in this example we have three images. So, images dot length would give you the number of images image elements that appears in the uh, document. So, it displays as 3 images. So, now uh, what we have seen so far is we have discussed about how uh, the HTML DOM hierarchy has been built and uh, we have explained that how to access the HTML elements using DOM and we, we have also seen that how to work with the DOM objects using JavaScript. Thank you.